Marcus Conti reporting. How you doing? How you doing? July 26th. July 26th, 2019. We made it. We're still here. We're still on this wonderful planet spinning around. Is it round or is it flat? <laughs> I don't know, man. Fucking people fucking throwing out shit that is fucking... We're on a donut. So, Mark Scott reporting going to talk about the anti-BDS rule, the anti-BDS bill working its way through Cong Congress, wins an anonymous, amazing amounts of votes, 380 to, 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 to like 17, right? Landslided through Congress. We'll talk about that. It's a piece of shit. It's a piece of garbage. Needs to be, you know, needs to be ratified. Um, what else? Talk about, uh, talk about that. Talk about Ilhan Omar made a, a, a wild statement, right? These people are crazy, right? You got, you got, um, you got, uh, what's her name? Um, Rashida Talib saying one thing, like, uh, say, supporting the anti BD, uh, opposing the anti BDS legislation. And then you got Ilhan Omar saying that, uh, more, that, that suggests people should be more fearful of white men than jihadists. What the hell is she talking about? Tulsi Gabbard suing Google for how many billion? How many million? $50 million. What the hell's going through her mind? She voted for anti-BDS, so she's, uh, she's on her way out, in my view. U.S. targets vast food corruption scam in Venezuela. More sanctions, more U.S. sanctions in the, in the U.S. So let's talk about, let's start here. Let's talk about Pentagon wants 16-year-old kids to fight the empire's wars. Hmm, sounds reasonable, right? The, this is, uh, thank you, Ron Paul Institute for Peace and Prosperity. The Pentagon is desperate. Far too many millennials are criminals, so luring them in to become the latest crop of bullet stoppers for the state is a non-starter. Really. Solution, recruit 16-year-old kids. Most have, yet gra most, most have yet graduated to petty violent crime, although a lot of them are in video game training for a future of violence and self-destructive stupidity. Wow, that's a, that's a harsh, harsh view of our, of, our, of our youth. Don't you think so? Don't you think so, Ron? That's a little harsh on our kids, man. Like all they are is criminals and, 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 and uh, uh, stupid video game players. It's not that being uh, widely, it's not being widely reported in the media. Recruiters are, are ready to go after 10th graders. They are itching to snag kids before they engage in a life of crime or before they have fully matured brains and decide to kill and be killed instead of uh, in, 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 uh, be killed isn't much of a career choice. Uh, so that's their career choice, kill or be killed. It's a great country, man. I love it, man. So, so here we go, man. So first, uh, the state will have to give these little darlings the right to vote first. Of course, if you're gonna, if they're gonna go off and fight and die in wars, you should give them the right to, uh, you know, age of consent, uh, sexual age, the right to drink, the right to vote, the right to drive. You should give everything, man. The guys, kids are running around, running around with guns, shooting guns, protecting everybody, and they can't drive. They can't have a drink. They can't, uh, you know, can't vote. It's just crazy, right? I don't know about you. This is great. I don't know about you, but when I was 16, all I thought about was cruising in my father's car with a freshly minted state permission to drive card in my wallet. And as I searched desperately for girls willing to make out in the back seat. Ah, sucking. it's a great memory, right? It's fucking awesome. That's what kids should be doing. That's what the kids should be doing at 16. Not, not uh, you know, they should be doing that, driving around searching for some makeout in the back seat. And they should be exploring career opportunities. They should be exploring the potential to go to college. So, so because the, the oligarchs need people to go and fight and die in their stupid wars, they're now targeting 16-year-olds. What a fucking shame. Right. So... You know, that's just, it's just crazy, man. It's just, it's not right. It's not right. And, uh, you know, most of these so-called volunteers, so-called volunteers, quote, joined the military because they have so few other career options. So few other career options. Ain't that the freaking fact? If you consider killing other people a career choice, well, then that is a career choice. You want to kill? Hey, young man, you want to kill? 
You want to kill? You like the movie, The Terminator? How many people got killed in that movie? You want to do some real killing? You want to kill for real? Brought up in largely single-parented homes and taught all manner of nonsense in public schools that now resemble lockdown prisons, these volunteers are completely ignorant of the reason the state needs them to fight and die. Tell them the reason. What is the reason they fight and die? The reason is to keep the money machine going, to keep oligarchy in, in place. It's not, it's not peace and prosperity at home. Anybody right now from 18 to, to 45 is, is fair game for a draft. I, I, I mean, for me, if the only time that I would fight and die for this country is if I looked out over the, the beach of Coney Island and a foreign power was storming the beaches with guns blazing. You know, I'd be the first one to, to, to join the troops and fight back. But other than that, you can go fuck yourself, man, because that shit is crazy, man, throwing kids into war like that. So what else? So let's talk BDS. This is ugly. What is anti-BDS? I'm going to try to explain it the best I can, and, and in my view, what it, what it amounts to. So anti-BDS legislation passed 398 to 17 in Congress on Tuesday. What is it? Boycott, divest, and sanctions movement. An anti, anti boycott, divest, and sanctions movement. So the, the bill is to stop this movement of boycott, divest, and sanctioning who? Israel. That's what it is, right? So any so so the 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 outcome of it was Congress passes it. Now it has to go, I believe, through Senate, and then the president signs it. And the president's a, a, a you know, Trump's a, a Israel-loving mother effer, so he's going to sign it, of course. But what it, it gives Israel, because Israel is Jewish and, and anything anti-Jewish is anti-Semitism, right? the, the bill gives, it, it prevents corporations from boycott, divest, and sanctioning Israel because of their, their, uh, their oppression of the Palestinian people. So if a corporation like McDonald's says, we're not going to put McDonald's in Israel because they treat the Palestinian people like shit and second-class citizens, that is now illegal, is on the verge of becoming illegal in our country. So how did they pass it? How did the Congress get it passed? By telling the people, no, 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 that doesn't mean you. It just means the corporations. So people still have their First Amendment rights to boycott, divest, and sanction but if you're a corporation, no, 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 you're not allowed to do that. You're going to be punished. You're going to be punished legally. Right? What other country, what other, what other foreign power has that kind of influence over American politics? Who? Nobody. There's nothing, there's nothing even similar. Why is one country getting legislation to prevent boycotting them for their apartheid behavior in their own country, right? in the West Bank and Gaza Strip, right? which is widely believed, acknowledged by the UN and any smart thinking people around the world, see Israel as a occupying, you know, it's, it's, it's an occupation you know, state over the Palestinian people in the West Bank and Gaza. They don't have full rights of citizenship. They were there first. And, uh, but nonetheless, they, they get there, you know, it's like, what about, what about, um, why do, what are we going to do with China? Well, what about China? China's pushing into Taiwan. We step in and prevent it. China's trying to push into Hong Kong. We're kind of stepping in. The Hong Kong people are fighting, fighting their asses off against the Chinese. What well, Tibet? Uh, we, we, we oppose Chinese, you know, uh, well, actually we, we didn't. We let, we let China run over Tibet. Uh, this shit is crazy, man. So... So that's anti-BDS, and the, the, people that, um, the people that signed on to it, the Congress that signed on to it, should all be replaced. Every one of them that, that signed on to this thing should be replaced, Tulsi Gabbard included. So that's what it is, and um, his, this is great. This is great. Tal, uh, Rashida Tlaib. Now, these, these four kooks, right, the four radical <laughs> new Congress people, uh, are either spot on or they walk around with their foot in their mouth. But here's one example of Rashida Tlaib actually making a great point. Listen to this. Granddaughter of Palestinian, I stand before you as the granddaughter of Palestinian.
grandmother, my city, who yearns to experience equality, human dignity, and freedom. I stand before you, the daughter of Palestinian immigrants, parents who experience being stripped of their human rights, the right to freedom of travel, equal treatment. So I can't stand by and watch this attack on our freedom of speech and the right to boycott the racist policies of the government and the state of Israel. I love our country's freedom of speech, Madam Speaker. Dissent is how we nurture democracy and grow to be better and more humane and just. And this is why I oppose Resolution 243. All Americans have a right, a constitutional right, guaranteed by the First Amendment to freedom of speech, to petition their government and to participate in boycotts. Speech in pursuit of civil and human rights at home and abroad is protected by our First Amendment. That is one reason why our First Amendment is so powerful. With a few exceptions, the government is simply not allowed to discriminate against speech based on its viewpoint or its speaker. The right to boycott is deeply rooted in the fabric of our country. What was the Boston Tea Party but a boycott? Where would we be now without the boycott led by civil rights activists in the 1950s and 60s, like the Montgomery Bus Boycott and the United Farm Workers Grape Boycott? Some of this country's most important advances in racial equality and equity and workers' rights has been achieved through collective action protected by our Constitution. Ah, you can't argue with that, right? She's spot on. But how, how did 200 and, and how did 398 congressmen not get it? Not They didn't get the memo? So, see, this is, you know, she gets big points for this, right? Pointing out the hypocrisy of this bill and how it, it now prevents corporations from, from exercising human dignity, which is, you know, divest in a country that is clearly an apartheid state. So, on the flip side of that, let's look at... Um, Ilhan Omar, I, I mean, this, 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 his, uh, the, 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 the polar opposite of what uh, Rashida Talib just said. Now we got Ilhan Omar, the, the super, she said some really good stuff, but now she's attacking whites. Actually, it's from 2018, but it's coming back. Ilhan Omar suggests people should be more fearful of white men than jihadists. Come on, come on, Ilhan Omar, Ilhan Omar. Hello, Somalia. From Somalia, yeah, yeah. Where's she from? She's from fucking Somalia. Ah, <laughs> uh, these people are crazy. So, Rep. Rep. Ilhan Omar said America should be more fearful of white men when discussing the threat of jihadist terrorism. The Minnesota progressive was asked in a resurfacing interview with Al Jazeera in August 2018, a year ago, about the rise of Islamophobia, citing the attacks that that killed eight people on the Manhattan bike path, which really was an Islamophobia, and the 2018 terror attack in San Bar- Bardino, California, that killed 14. I don't know about that one. But the 2017 one was just some crazy, I think it was some crazy Arab that ran over tourists in the street on the West Side bike path. So what the hell are you talking about, Ilhan Omar? That's not a legitimate... That's not a legitimate uh, 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 That's not a legitimate event to point at. I would say our country should be more fearful of white men across our country because they are actually causing most of the deaths within this country. Wow, this is fucking so racist. So venomously racist, Ilhan Omar. And then she turns around and says something great about the Palestinian, great in in support of the Palestinian people. She also voted uh, against anti-BDS. This is, I mean, this is who these people are. They're, they're deeply conflicted and deeply confused along racial lines, believing that, that, that white people hate them. So sad. So also, let's talk more about hate. This is pretty funny, right? I just found it. So Laura Joomer, Laura Joomer, Loomer, excuse me, Laura Joomer, Loomer. The Juma Loomer is back in action, right? This is some radical kind of chick, if you don't know who she is. She runs around attacking people, and, and she's the Islamophobia par excellence. She hates Muslims. She hates any, anybody that, 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 that even frowns upon the Jew. She's the super Jew. Uh, she's the super, super support for Israel. And, and Donald Trump, the president who supports Israel, he's my president. He's my president, Donald Trump, right? Super Jew, uh, 
So, so they track down Bernie Sanders. This is pretty funny. And Bernie, Bernie Sanders confirms something about <laughs> Laura Jumer and her team. Uh, this is pretty funny. So, so here comes Bernie. Watch this shit. This is hysterical, man. Me right now, you can help me right now. Me. You no, just no, grabbed no, me. You're assaulting a gay man. Hurry, Stop hurry. it. You're assaulting a gay man. Stop it. Stop it. Why won't you condemn Antifa? Why won't you condemn Antifa? Why won't you condemn Antifa? Domestic It's a free country and anybody can be a moron. Anybody can be a moron. So what do you call? Ah, Laura Juma, that shit backfired on you. You're chasing the fucking good senator from San Francisco. Antifa. Yeah. Firebombing. You want to take our country and say. So you're chasing, they're chasing Bernie Sanders around, uh, down at an airport, comes out the airport. And Jumer and her, and her gay buddy are there to say that Bernie Sanders supports Antifa. Ha, ah, he's an Antifa. What are you talking about? Uh, one thing has nothing to do with the other. Uh, so, but they're trying to make their point. And Bernie Sanders confirms that Lord Juma is a fucking moron. So thank you. That was, that was good work, uh, Laura. Thank you for putting that video up and confirming what everybody already knew. So Tulsi Gabbard uh, is in the news. Anti-war Democrat candidate Tulsi Gabbard sues Google for campaign interference. Really now? Let's find out. Progressive Democratic presidential candidate Tulsi Gabbard, who has long been under fire, uh, venomously, uh, venom, uh, venomously anti-war and anti-interventionist stands, is suing Google. For what? Well, Tulsi Gabbard, the campaign com, com, uh, committee for Tulsi Gabbard said Google suspended the campaign's advertising account for six hours on June 27th and June 28th, obstructing its ability to raise money and spread their message to potential voters. Now, Tulsi Gabbard just voted on Tuesday for anti-BDS legislation to uh, prevent corporations from from uh, divesting in Israel against the Palestinian oppression. Uh, she's Mr. Miss Anti-War. There's conflict here. There's conflict here, Tulsi. Conflict. So you're suing Google so that you can become the president. I want to become the president. Google's arbitrary and capricious treatment of Gabby's campaign should rise, raise concerns for policymakers everywhere about the company's ability to use its dominance to impact political discourse. Yeah, it should, but where are you, Where because only when it affects you, what happens when, when YouTubers are getting crushed and, and run over? Where, where were you? Where was your voice? Where was your voice suing on behalf of the people as the Congress people, only when it affects you directly? Psst. I don't know, man. I, I'm not a fan. I'm not a fan. His, here she is with, uh, here she is with uh, Tucker. Let's watch a little bit of it seem like basically an untouchable. She is not allowed to get the kind of coverage that the rest of the Democratic candidates get. But the viewers loved it. At the debate, Gabbard's was the most searched name online. Tul that doesn't really have to do with the story, so I don't, I don't want to watch that. So, um, so, so we'll just follow that. Tulsi Gabbard is suing the shit out of uh, Google for $50 million. <clears throat> That's one way of raising money. <laughs> I hope she wins some money, right? So this is this is fucking crazy shit, man. Now, what what one day, right? Just imagine, right? Now I, I'm a vegetarian, so this shit doesn't apply to me, right? But what if what if you what if you weren't a vegetarian and you're sitting in a sushi restaurant one day, right? And there's freshly freshly butchered chicken on your plate. Right? It's healthy, right? Isn't it fresh? Fresh meat on your plate, right? And you're sitting there and, and the, the good waiter brings it over, right? Right? And, and, and then this happens. Ah, what would you do? It's fresh, right? What are you screaming about, man? Eat it. It's fresh meat, right? It's still half alive, right? It's got some, it's got some, some super hormone in there kicking, kicking, up its, kicking up its last breath. Ah, who needs a liver? Who needs insides? Who needs eyeballs and a head? Just fucking kick it, man. Kick it. Fucking. Who needs... I, I, I want to get out of this fucking plate, man. I'm nobody's meal. I'm nobody's meal. I don't need eyes. I don't need a head. I don't need legs. I'm just fucking... I'm some raw chicken. 
chicken eating motherfuckers. I'm out of here. That's crazy, man. What would you do? I mean, I would fucking run out of there terrified, man. <laughs> you have people screaming in the background. So, last story. U.S. Um, this is ugly. U.S. targets vast food cor- corruption scam. Vast, quote, food corruption scam in fresh Venezuela sanctions. So the U.S. is on the move again. Donald Trump swamp, Mnuchin, Bolton, Elliot Abrams, uh, uh, fucking Mike, Mike Pompeo. Uh, here they go. Uh, to international and mainstream media have largely, though mainstream media has largely moved on from Venezuela following a failed U.S. coup against uh, Maduro from Juan Puerto. The U.S. continues to hit the economic collapsed country with more sanctions. Uh, now, it's widely reported that Venezuela is en route to famine in, an, uh, in another year if these sanctions continue. Uh, on Thursday, the U.S. Treasury under Steve Mnuchin, announced, Trump swamp announced, it's taking aim at, quote, vast food corruption network. What? What? What are you talking about, Wayne? What are you talking about, Garth? There's no vast food corruption network. No. No, 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 no. When you're feeding people, you can call food stamps a vast uh, food corruption network, right? Come on, man. It's feeding people. They're feeding people under under very very um, uh, you know bad bad conditions with the U.S. sanctioning the shit out of them, right? So so let's read more. Imposing sanctions on ten people and thirteen groups alleged to be running a Venezuelan food subsidy scheme, the proceeds of which went straight to lining Maduro's pockets. That's such propaganda. The Treasury called it Treasury under Mnuchin called it a vast corruption network profiting profiting from overvalued contracts tapping into Caracas's food subsidy program and spearheaded by the Colombian national Alex Nansab Alex Nansab This is bullshit right here right so you can't the, the country's choked they can't sell their oil because the U.S. is stealing their money, stealing, tapping into their, their, their ability to get paid for their oil that was sold, you know, through PDVSA. Uh, England snatched all their gold. Right? Sanctions on any country that, that, that buys Venezuelans oil, that trades with them food. Uh, vast sanctions, right? It's not, it's just it's horrible. It's a horrible thing we're doing in this country. And it's on our watch, and it's got to stop, right? So it continues, um, right? U.S. Is, is now targeting the food, targeting the distribution of food in the country that's ultimately going to lead to a famine. What, that's, you call that humanitarian effort? You call that humanitarian aid? So the U.S. has a, has a solution. They say that, um, that if Maduro wants to leave on his, own, on, a co- on his own accord, then the United States will lift the sanctions. Venezuela, in, so if Maduro, the, 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 the uh, duly elected president of Venezuela, leaves because the U.S. said so and appoints Juan Guardo, right? Juan Guardo fills the power vacuum, then the United States will uh, lift the sanctions and, and then they'll seize the oil and then everything will be fine, right? The people will go up a little bit in their economic strife, right? Right now they're starving. They'll eat, you know, twice a day. That's the U.S.'s solution to these problems. It's not funny. I, I'm laughing, but it's not funny. It's very sad. It's very sad what we do around the country. So anti-BDS legislation passes the House, is now going to go on to Senate. Any one of these senators that votes for this should be condemned. Any, if the president, if it squeaks by the Senate and the president votes for it, vote him out. I, Israel is an apartheid nation. Israel oppresses the Palestinian people pushes into the West Bank, takes their property, inserts the Jew into the Palestinian property and says, no, 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 the Jew has to, has to spread. And any, any criticism of Israel is, is anti-Semitic, is anti-Jew. No, it's anti-Israel. It's anti-Israel uh, uh, action in, in its own country. So, so, well, we got it. So US is, the U.S. corporations are not allowed to uh, boycott, divest, or sanction 
um, Israel because of their belief that the Palestinian people are getting fucked. All right? But people, you could still go out in the street and, and boycott all you want, but the corporations are not going to do anything about it. Uh, so we've got, we've got a lot of kooks running around, running. It's all social issues, right? It's all, it's all I mean, that one's a financial issue, but mostly, you know, identity politics rule the day in, in the House and the Senate. And um, so I don't know what, what's, your, what's your opinion. I don't know. I say, I say, anti BDS. Nope, no, 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 man. You got to get rid of that shit, man. You got to overturn that shit. Stay out of Venezuela. Leave the sixteen-year-olds alone, right? Leave the sixteen-year-old kids alone. Take, get the, let them go on to school. Let them feel the warmth of a woman or the warmth of a man before they go off to the killing machine and kill everybody, right? Uh, it's a crazy day in news. Right? Marcus Conte, Marcus Conte, reporting. <laughs> 